I'm used to working alone in my studio, so this social isolation hasn't made much difference to my daily life, if you can tune out the awful, tragic part of all of this. I've always found solace in art making, especially because what I do is hands-on and involves physical media that is sensual, paints and pencils, yarn, wax, and the processes, the hand coloring or sewing, using my hands to make something is joyful, or at the very least soothing. It takes me outside myself. It really is a form of meditation. I turn to it now to feel better. I started making pictures of nests years ago, but only recently had the idea to print them on silk. It's only been recently possible to digitally print on so many surfaces, including all sorts of fabric, which are now widely commercially available. I wanted the nest to have a delicate flimsy quality and the silk allowed me to embroider them. I like the optical illusion this creates because you can't see the threads until you get up close. I also cut and sand and paint the balsa wood spaces that fit into the frames to make a shadow box that the silk is pinned inside. So the whole thing is one big craft project really. I grew up in a country town in Australia in the 60s and 70s when a lot of people made their own clothes and grandmothers taught you to knit and crochet. Back then we darned holes in socks and mended things, replaced zippers and fixed buttonholes. You didn't throw things away. So there was always a sewing machine and bobbins and threads and jars of buttons. Often you would unpick one piece of clothing to use the material to make something new. There is a word for this now, it's called upcycling. It occurred to me that birds do this when they make a nest. They use what they find around them, twigs, leaves, spider web, caterpillar silk, animal hair, and sometimes man-made stuff. And they weave these together without hands to make their homes. It's laborious. It takes a bird hundreds or thousands of trips to gather materials for their nest. And they don't use the same nest twice. They often make a new one out of the materials from the previous nest. And each species builds a different structures specific to their needs. Wildly different architecture. Think of sparrow's nests made of mud and saliva suspended under a bridge. And a bowerbird that builds a nest on the ground and elaborately decorates it with brightly coloured things to attract a mate. They know instinctively how to do this without being taught because of what is called genetic memory, which are abilities and responses incorporated into their genetic code, just like their songs and dances and knowing to migrate, where to go and when. I find this all extraordinary. The French philosopher Gaston Bachelard wrote a book in the 50s called The Poetics of Space about architectural spaces and their contexts in nature as dwellings or sheltering places. There is a whole chapter about nests and all the metaphors and analogies surrounding them and what emotions they engender in us and why. It's a very beautiful text I relate to completely. Since childhood, I've always found nests in some ways exciting, perhaps because they are the mysterious secret places that allow you to have an intimacy with a wild bird. And perhaps I crave that relationship with nature. In fact, I think it's safe to say that is what all my work is about whether it's nests or shells or trees or quail eggs. It's all about wonder and love, really, 